In the past four months, I've been pretty obsessed with uh, feet. And <clears throat> there's actually a reason for this. I do not like feet, probably because I hated my feet for so long because I had plantar fasciitis in junior high school. No, no, I'm sorry. My junior year in high school and also for about four or five years in both feet in my mid-20s. And if you've never had plantar fasciitis, I can assure you it's really, really painful. And it's pretty unrelenting because if you can't walk or can't stand, you can't really do much. Uh, it, it, it's depressing. That's really all you can say. It's really depressing and it's unbelievably painful. So what is plantar fascia? Plantar fascia is on the bottom of the foot. It goes from the heel to the base of the toes. And it really looks like a web. And it provides support for the foot, for the arch. And it helps the foot respond to ground. Now remember, the human foot was designed, or it developed, through <clears throat> humans that lived on uneven ground, probably not wearing shoes. Right, we didn't live on flat floors. We didn't live on concrete. We didn't live on wood flooring or tile. Ground is uneven, so this arch that we have would fill with ground. Right? It, wasn't, it wasn't left touching nothing as you walked. And the foot would, has, I think, six axes of motion. And it's really intricate. And it has a lot of little muscles and tendons and ligaments that wrap all these structures up. And it's really supposed to be responsive. Plantar fasciitis seems to come from feet that are not responsive, from feet that are rigid. And that's a lot different than feet that are stable. Feet that are stable can respond to all types of different changing environments. Changing environments, that's the important thing. Uneven ground, those are changing environments. And that's what the foot is meant to respond to, and that's what your brain expects. It expects changing environments and differences in pressure and movement. If it doesn't get it, it tightens you up as a protective response. We know this, there are uh, mechanoreceptors in plantar fascia tissue. Uh, Ruffini and the other Italian, can't remember the name of it, but they respond to pressure, sustained pressure and quick changes in pressure. And what is walking? Walking is alternating pressure from the right side to the left side. Unloading, loading, unloading, loading. Change of pressure, that's what these receptors respond to. Now, and they're telling your brain when that's happening. Now, if your foot is not going through a full range of motion where you're not fully deloading from one side to the other, what if you're, stu you're stuck on the right side, which a lot of people are, and you never fully push yourself over to the left side? If your body weight never truly gets there, that means your right side never truly deloads. Your brain is gonna know it. And after a while, it's gonna say, I don't like the fact that my body is not unloading and deloading, alternating on both sides and I'm gonna tighten you up as a response. Now, of course, that makes things worse because now you have a body that really can't deload and load and deload and load. So, with that, keeping that in mind, where I think most treatment of plantar fasciitis falls short, and again, I was one of, those people, one of these people, I read a study, it said between 90 and 95% of people will respond in a positive way to traditional or conservative methods of treatment, which of course include the old stretching and strengthening, blah, 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 um, uh, foot orthotics, uh, anti-inflammatory, things of that nature, ice, rest. But how can you rest? You gotta walk, you gotta live. Uh, but it takes up to from six months to a year for this to be successful. So who knows what's going on to make that successful? I would probably argue that that success is because the body has created a situation which it has to alleviate the pain in the foot by creating problems somewhere else. So maybe uh, other parts of your body have now ended up compensating to get pressure off those feet that are not able to load and deload properly. 
So maybe that's why it takes so long. But anyway, whatever was done for me never worked. They had me rolling my foot out on a can, stretching my calves, and orthotics that just made things worse. And why? Because they never checked what was going on above in the pelvis or the neck. Mechanics of the pelvis drive the foot motion. Mechanics of the rib cage, the rotation of the rib cage, drive us, our body weight from side to side. So it's all connected. We always say it's all connected, but no one really, really investigates what these connections are. So you can't really resolve plantar fasciitis through treating a foot because the foot's not the problem. The foot is a symptom of what's going on in other areas. And this is, in my opinion, the most likely culprit. I'm sure there's sometimes that the foot really does have a deformity or there was structural damage to it. But I'm saying when it comes out of nowhere and it lasts, it's probably coming from somewhere else. So what do you do? First of all, you have to address the pelvis and the rib cage to get proper mechanics of the pelvis and rib cage moving. The other thing is, you can stretch calves, you can stretch quads, because all, both of those muscles, I can't put this pack together, influence joint mechanics. But the other interesting thing is, this is where people get really interested, is, all right, so here's a right leg. And my muscles are gonna probably start falling off the moment I move them. So we got the calf muscles, here's the Achilles tendon, and through uh, fascial connections, it attaches to the plantar fascia. So yeah, there is this whole connection, and then it'll, it'll connect fascially through the hamstrings up into the pelvis and glutes. And that's why if you do roll your, the, your plantar fascia on a tennis ball, you might actually increase your flexibility because it relaxes the, the, the tension of the fascia overall you might be able to now get lower in a standing reach test. Uh, however, it's gonna come back. It's not, not gonna change anything long term. Because the right foot still might not be getting down. So what typically happens on the right side is a foot, and this thing is not that maneuverable, that is supinated. All right, so the foot is on the outside. People will feel their weight on the heel, outside heel of the right foot, which means the arch of that foot, the arch never truly gets down. So the plantar fascia stays tight because a foot that doesn't get down is a foot that's staying tight. In supination or heel inversion, you land in inversion, you pronate, so the, heel come, the arch comes down, and then you re-supinate or you re-invert the heel to form a rigid lever of the foot so it can push forward. Pronation, when the, when the arch comes down, that's the restful state. That's when these muscles can all relax and change the, then, then change their, uh, their function. Plantar fascia has to relax also, but if you're staying supinated the whole time, instead of supination, pronation, supination, these intrinsic, these muscles in the bottom of the foot and the fascia and it's all mixed up together and the fascia actually attaches to the muscles. They never get to relax, so you're staying tense 24 seven. Until you can get your body weight to, you can get your arch on the right side to come down and push your body weight over to the left so the left side can load and the right side can deload, your mechanoreceptors are gonna know that. Your fascia is gonna get tight, your muscles are gonna get tight, uh, and it's gonna alter the way that you walk overall. And again, your mechanoreceptors that respond to pressure, loading and deloading, are gonna send information to your brain that's saying, look buddy, you are not alternating from side to side. What the hell's going on? And you're just gonna probably end up tighter as a response. But what you can do, and this is where people get really interested, like I said, is if you perceive that your weight is on the outside of your right heel, and not everyone will be, because there's different, there's different pelvic positions going on up top. But if you do, this is what I use, this little uh, quarter of an inch pad. If you put it underneath the right, the outside of the arch, what does that do? I'm sorry, the, out, on the outside of the foot, towards the heel, it actually pushes someone onto their arch. 
So their arch comes down into pronation, and they, into pronation and they sense that and they feel it. And they'll say it right away. They're like, oh, that feels different. Because now their arch is touching the ground because I brought the heel up on the outside. And now muscles can relax. The plantar fascia can oh, relax. Calves can relax. You might get someone's neck pattern to clear up immediately just through doing that, through sensing the arch. Then they can feel their big toe on the ground. This is real. People are like, oh my god, I feel my big toe for the first time. This is real. Uh, and that completely changes the way their brain is perceiving the, the floor. They might feel their weight shifting over to the left side more. So now they have a left side that can load and a right side that can deload. Now those mechanoreceptors are like, oh, that's the change I expected. The brain says, there we go, now I can relax overall. When you're not alternating from side to side, you get stuck. Uh, and one of these little uh, arch pad, not an arch pad, uh, lateral shoe wedge can help you do that. Any material can really do that. You just have to boost it up a little bit and it'll make you come down on your, on your arch. And that's why plantar fasciitis, and again, it, it stinks, it's the worst. Uh, is not a, generally not a local foot issue. The foot is the victim, but it's coming from other areas. So you do have to work out what's going on at the pelvis. You have to work on what's going on in the rib cage. If your rib cage is not all, uh, rotating properly, uh, if your arms are not swinging properly, you can't really drive your weight effectively from side to side. Necks have to be moving properly. But in the long run, plantar fasciitis really has to be dealt with most times with a total body, uh, from a total body point of view. Uh, you have to be able to walk properly. A foot has to pronate, supinate, pronate, supinate. If it stays in one position the whole time, your brain is not going to like it and your body is not going to like it and you're going to hurt.